Ducati is one of the most respected motorcycle companies in the world, but did you know that without its monster range, Ducati wouldn't even be in existence today? And at first, Ducati had zero faith in the monster. But why? Let's find out in today's video. When the Italian manufacturer decided that they wanted a vehicle that didn't appear like a racing replica or anything else in their lineup, they built the first monster in 1993. To try to attract a new sort of rider and promote much needed sales when they were on the verge of bankruptcy, they entirely removed the fairings as well as everything else considered unnecessary. Rather than building a completely new chassis, Ducati engineers and Miguel Galuzzi stayed with what they knew and constructed the naked bike around the company's well-known steel trellis frame from the 888, connected it to the 904cc air-cooled engine from the 900SS, and launched his new bike at the Cologne Motorcycle Show in 1992, using his theory that all a motorcycle needed was a saddle, tank, engine, two wheels, and handlebars. It was the first contemporary street bike and he nicknamed it the Monster. It was a successful strategy. The outcome was the first M900 model, which allowed Ducati to claim a new area of the motorcycle market, the sports naked category. And at first, the production figure for the 1993 Ducati M900 was initially set for just a thousand bikes, which showed the lack of belief or commitment Ducati had in the Monster. But as I said a while ago, following the great response during the Cologne Motorcycle Show in 1992, it was evident that they would need to ramp up production. And at that time, the M900 was never actually destined to be a Ducati, and it was initially set to be a Kajiva model. It was only because of a last-minute change of heart that it was given the Ducati moniker. The Monster M900 almost never got into production due to this, as well as Ducati's shortage of credits with suppliers like Brembo because money was so tight they didn't pay people like Brembo. So bikes were stuck on the production line without any brakes at all, as Brembo refused to supply calipers until they'd been paid. In 1993, the term street bike or naked bike didn't exist at all. Sport bikes became kings with the debut of the Fire Blade in 1992, and riders' interests were either concentrated on going fast or simply touring. Some bikes lacked fairings, but they were either middle-of-the-road commuters or old and hefty throwback bikes. All of this was a far cry from the magnificent monster. Motorcycles like the Honda's insipid CB1000 or the Big One and Kawasaki's awful Zephyr 1100 were dinosaurs in comparison to the light and quick-handling Ducati. The Ducati was a unique bike, featuring a sport bike chassis and more but a cafe racer's appearance. Riders all throughout Europe became crazy with Ducati's revolutionary concept. The monster's elemental simplicity has also made it a favorite platform for custom motorcycle builders, showcased at competitions like the Monster Challenge. To put into perspective just how successful and revolutionary the monster was, consider this. It was launched in 1993. A year later, Triumph unveiled the first speed triple. A year after that, Suzuki launched the Bandit 1200, then the whole street bike scene snowballed into what it is today. And in 2005, Monster sales accounted for over half of Ducati's worldwide sales. The Monster represents a huge success story for the brand, Ducati as a business, and the motorcycling industry as a whole. From the very first Monster M900, the M600, which opened up the world of Ducati to younger riders, to the second generation with the 969, wait no, 696 and 1100 models, passing through the four valve versions up to the most recent 797, 821, and 1200 models. The Monster's Legend is based on how it saved Ducati when it was on the verge of bankruptcy, as well as how it has helped so many riders begin their two wheeled careers. So 
guys, the video is now over. So thank you for watching today's video. If you like my videos, make sure to press the like button. Make sure to press the subscribe button if you want to follow me on my journey of loving motorcycles. And make sure to press the notification bell. Don't press none. Goodbye.